95.5 KZY All 70s Music Weekend. A bonus hit from this date, October 1st, 1978. Bob Seger, the Silver Bullet Band, Hollywood Nights. Good evening. It is 10.06 and time for the top 10 at 10 here at 95.5 KZY. Counting down the top 10 songs of October 1st, 1978. If you can close your eyes and kind of picture 28 years ago. If you lived in the city of Bemidji, the weather well, wasn't too much different than it was today. A little bit uh, cooler, more seasonable temps. 60 degrees, uh, some showers here and there. It was a uh, big news day 28 years ago, October 1st, as thousands gathered in Vatican City for the funeral of Pope John Paul I, who had died on September 28th after only 33 days in office making his one of the shortest reigns in papal history and making 1978 the most recent year of the three popes. Also in the news, ventriloquist Edgar Bergen, who had just the previous week announced that he and his character Charlie McCarthy were retiring from show business, died in Las Vegas at the age of 75. And here in Minnesota, Campaign 78 was in full swing and in a poll of most likely voters released on this day 28 years ago, Governor Rudy Perpich had a 51 to 42 percent lead over challenger Al Qui. Both U.S. Senate seats were up for grabs. DFL candidate Bob Short had an 11 point lead over independent Republican Dave Durenberger and independent Republican Rudy Boschwitz held a slim four point lead over incumbent DFL Senator Wendell Anderson. Of course, uh, a lot happened between then and Election Day in 1978. Only Rudy Boschwitz held on to the lead, as indicated in the polls. Dave Durenberger went on to fill the Senate seat previously held by the late Hubert Humphrey. And Al Qui became our next governor. In sports, the Twins' Rod Carew celebrated his 33rd birthday by winning his 11th American League batting championship. However, uh, Rod was not a happy camper. After the Twins lost their final game of the season to Kansas City 1-0, Carew declared that he would never play for the Minnesota Twins again. And uh, as far as a player, he didn't. And his uh, feelings and comments, well, wouldn't be very uh, politically correct to repeat them in 2006. But uh, apparently uh, over the years, he did uh, make amends with the Twins. And he's now uh, working with them again on a uh, coaching basis, from what I understand. Also in sports, a quarterback Fran Tarkenton did a good job of keeping the ball away from the Buccaneers, limiting them to just one touchdown as the Vikings beat Tampa Bay 24-7. to Now, all of that happened on this date 28 years ago. And as we start the countdown of the top 10 songs of October 1st, 1978, I want to let you know that the uh, top 10 at 10 is compiled from a listing of uh, top 40 radio station surveys around the country. On this date, 28 years ago. And, of course, we uh, kick things off with the uh, number 10 song. This singer was born James Ambrose Johnson in 1948 and up until his death in 2004 had a long career as a keyboardist, bassist, producer, and arranger as well as composer. Known as the father of funk, Rick James had a total of six top 10, or I should say top 40 hits, and uh, many more on the R&B charts all the way through the early 1990s. This was Rick's first top 40 hit. It peaked the previous week at number 9. On October 1st, 1978, it was number 10. On Gordy Records, it's You and I, the late Rick James, as we count down the top 10 songs on this date 28 years ago here on 95.5 KZY. KZY, All 70s Music Weekend. Top 10 at 10, the number 10 song on this date, 28 years ago, October 1st, 1978, from the late Rick James, You and I. The number 9 song is by a rock band that was formed in 1976 by veteran musicians Mick Jones and Ian McDonald, along with a then-unknown vocalist named Lou Graham. This was the third top 10 hit for this band from New York City that is still touring today, albeit without Graham, who, uh, by the way, was at Moondance Jam a few years back with his own band. If you saw them, you know what I'm talking about. This song peaked at number five a few weeks back and by October 1st of 1978 was working its way down the charts. On Atlantic Records, it's Foreigner with Hot Blooded, number nine, as we count down the top 10 at 10 here at 95.5 KZY.
95.5 KZY All 70s Music Weekend. Top 10 at 10 and a bonus hit from October 1st, 1978 from Jerry Rafferty. The uh, follow-up to uh, Baker Street right down the line. I'm Brian Lee. It's 1024. We're going to resume the countdown of the top 10 songs of October 1st, 1978 in just a moment. But first, uh, check out that forecast from the KZY Weather Center. Clear tonight and quite comfortable with a low around 50. Southwest wind 5 to 9 becoming northwest. Partly cloudy. 73 tomorrow, northwest wind between 5 and 11. Partly cloudy tomorrow night, low around 46. Mostly cloudy, high near 60 on Tuesday. And temperatures pretty much remaining in that uh, seasonable level all the way through the end of the week. Mostly sunny, 59 on Wednesday, 60. Thursday, partly cloudy sky. Slight chance of showers on Friday with a high near 63. It's clear and 57 at your weather station. And with that, we resume the countdown with the top 10 songs of October 1st, 1978. Moving on to number 8. Another rocker. It is by a band that had its most notable successes in the 1970s and 80s. This group began when uh, Tom Schultz, a MIT engineering graduate who worked at Polaroid, began to create a series of tape recordings in his home studio, accompanied by guitarist Barry Goudreau and drummer Jim Messia. Schultz soon became frustrated with the limitations of the technology at the time and his inability to capture the sound he wanted. So he soon began developing and designing his own equipment and developing the signature sound Boston is best remembered by. With singer Brad Delp on vocals, the band drew the attention of executives at Epic Records, signed them to a two-album deal, releasing their self-titled debut album in 1976. Now, it would be uh, two years before they released their follow-up project. This was the second of three top ten hits for Schultz, Depp, and company, picking at number eight on this day 28 years ago. On Epic Records, it's Boston with Don't Look Back. But, oh, we are 28 years ago here on 95.5 KZY. KZY, All 70s Music Weekend, Top 10 at 10. Looking back 28 years ago, don't look back uh, as opposed to what Boston is saying. I'm Brian Lee. Quite a uh, diversity of music that you heard on the radio 28 years ago. You heard uh, all sorts of musical styles, and uh, the next song is a good example. The number seven song on October 1st, 1978. It's by an Australian singer and actress who has had an extremely versatile career in both pop and country music. She had her first hit single in 1971 with a remake of Bob Dylan's If Not For You. She would go on to have 15 top 10 hits over the next decade and achieved superstardom in 1978 when she was paired alongside John Travolta in a movie about the hijinks of a group of late 1950s high schoolers. Now, this song peaked at number four a few weeks back. One of the four top 10 hits from the soundtrack of Grease starring John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. On RSO Records, it's hopelessly devoted to you. Number seven as we count down the top ten songs of October 1st, 1978, here on 95.5 KZY. 95.5 KZY All 70s Music Weekend. The top ten at ten. That was number seven on this day 28 years ago from Olivia Newton. John, hopelessly devoted to you. You can... Kind of, uh, if you saw the movie Grease, of course, you can kind of picture uh, Sandy standing there looking up to the sky, uh, opening up her arms and, and singing that to uh, her, uh, at least at that point in time, lost lover. I'm Brian Lee, 1036, counting down the top 10 songs of October 1st, 1978. Moving on to number six. The number six song turned out to be a number, or I should say a one-hit wonder. Didn't quite get to number one. Uh, It was a one-hit wonder, though, for this English-born singer who eventually went on to more lasting success as a songwriter, composing tunes for such artists as Patti Smythe, Bette Midler, Joe Cocker, and Pat Benatar, and still tours North America where he is a a favorite at classic rock festivals. This song would eventually peak. It did peak at the top of the charts. I was wrong about that. It did peak at the top of the charts, would remain in the number one position for two weeks. On uh, Chrysalis Records, here's Nick Gilder, who I had a request for uh, earlier this evening. Number six song on this day 28 years ago, Hot Child in the City. All 70s Music Weekend, 95.5 KZY. Hot Child in the City. 95.5 KZY, All 70s Music Weekend, the top 10 at 10. That the number six song on October 1st, 1978, 28 years ago, Hot Child in the City from Nick Gilder. I'm Brian Lee, and uh, 28 years ago, 
A lot has changed in the uh, years since. Last time we did a top 10 countdown, we had uh, looked at the year 1970, but eight years later, technology had started to change things. Even here in Bemidji, cable TV had made its way to uh, at least the uh, city limits of Bemidji, so the uh, number of choices were uh, multiplying as far as what you could watch on TV. However, the uh, big three networks still dominated. Now, if you were well, sitting at home, in front of the tube tonight, 28 years ago. This is the primetime lineup you might have been watching on WDIO ABC Television. It was Battlestar Galactica starring Lauren Green, who, uh, of course, uh, Dave Brooks, Dave Shap Brooks is taking some renewed interest in that show. It looks like it's going to be remade on the big screen before too long. But also on ABC, it was the ABC Sunday Night Movie starring The Users, or I should say Showing The Users, starring Tony Curtis and uh, Jacqueline Smith. NBC's primetime lineup featured the wonderful world of Disney and the big event, which was typically a made-for-TV movie, this time around showing Centennial, starring Robert Conrad and Richard Chamberlain. And on CBS television, it was 60 Minutes, followed by Mary Tyler Moore's failed attempt at comedy variety, a la Carol Burnett. It was simply titled Mary. That was followed by All in the Family, and then the uh, primetime lineup was uh, capped off by a television show called Kaz. A long-forgotten, one-season wonder dealing with the exploits of former car thief turned criminal attorney Martin Kaz Kaczynski. Now, that was was on TV. If you wanted to go out to the movies uh, here in Bemidji, this is what was uh, showing around town on October 1st, 1978. Playing at the Amigo Twin, it was one-on-one, the story of a winner. And uh, over in the uh, second theater, it was The Norseman, starring Lee Majors, rated PG. If you wanted to sit in your car and watch a movie, it was still an option here in Bemidji 28 years ago on the big screen, of course. At the Cisco drive-in right next to the Amigo, it was Grey Lady Down, starring Charlton Heston and Stacey Keach, rated PG. And over the Bronco drive-in, it was The Happy Days' Ron Howard venturing onto the big screen with Grand Theft Auto, rated PG. And finally, right down the street from where I am uh, sitting right now, known today as the historic Chief Theater on the big screen, it was Coming Home, starring Jane Fonda and John Voight. Unfortunately, small-town theaters in 1978 still had uh, difficulties obtaining first-run movies. Today, of course, it's no longer an issue, at least here in Bemidji. But if you wanted to access the hottest movies in the country on October 1st, 1978, you had to take a four-hour drive to the Twin Cities. If you did that, this is what you had your choice of. Among other movies, Up in Smoke, starring Cheech and Chong, The End with Burt Reynolds, National Lampoon's Animal House, which, of course, made John Belushi a household name, or almost a household name anyway. And, of course, the top movie was Grease, starring, of course, Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta. Now, on your radio, though, uh, as long as you were diligent in your search, you could easily find the most popular hits. And with that, we resume the Top 10 Countdown from October 1st, 1978. Reaching the halfway point here with the uh, number five song by a Canadian singer that had her first international hit, Snowbird, in 1970. We could uh, be here most of the night talking about Anne Murray. She is the most successful female artist in music history and also the first to earn a gold record for uh, one of her signature tunes, which, of course, was 1970's Snowbird. So far, her albums have sold over 54 million copies worldwide, as well as one of the most successful Christmas artists of all time, with her Christmas album Selling in the Millions. She is often cited as the woman who paved the way for other Canadian international success stories, such as Celine Dion, Sarah McLachlan, and Shania Twain. This song would eventually go all the way to number one, and would stay at the top of the charts for two weeks. And get this, became the first number one song for a Canadian female solo artist. You got that? On Capitol Records, it's Anne Murray. You Needed Me, the number five song on October 1st, 1978, here at 95.5 KZY. KZY, all 70s music weekend. Anne Murray, you needed me. The number five song on this day 28 years ago. Brian Lee, count down the top 10 songs of October 1st, 1978. And moving out to the uh, number four spot on the charts, it was held by this actor, entertainer, who was quite a hot commodity at the time. 
He co-starred at ABC TV sitcom, was riding the way from his breakout hit movie the year before, and uh, his then-current hit movie effectively cemented his superstar status. The TV show, Welcome Back, Cotter. The breakout movie, Saturday Night Fever. The current movie... I think you know that by now. Grease, you know where I'm going with this. This song was the second of five top ten musical hits for John Travolta. However, he didn't do this one alone. From the Grease soundtrack on RSO Records, it's John Travolta with Olivia Newton-John. Summer nights as we continue to count down the top ten of ten here at 95.5 KZY. The KZY, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John with the number four song on this day 28 years ago. The number three song was by a highly successful soul funk band of the 1970s and 80s. The members of the group met as freshmen at Tuskegee Institute, now known as Tuskegee University, in 1968 and signed with uh, Motown, having first caught the public eye opening for the Jackson 5 while on tour. Over the course of their run, they had a total of nine top ten hits. Their final one, Night Shift, picked up a Grammy in 1985. Ironically, long after original lead singer Lionel Richie departed for a solo career. This song peaked at number two in the charts the week before. Now at number three on Motown Records, The Commodores. Once, twice, three times a lady. KZY. I love you. 95.5 KZY, all 70s music weekend, the top 10 at 10. And uh, that song, number three on this date, October 1st, 1978, Commodores, Three Times a Lady. I'm Brian Lee, counting them down to number one. We got the top two songs next. So get your coupon books while supplies last. Get your Bemidji High School Music Department coupon books here at the studios of 95.5 KZY. All right, getting back to the uh, countdown. Well, I just kind of gave it away there. Uh, tell you what, uh, tell you a little bit more about this song later on. It's the number two song, Australian rock band formed in the mid 70s and had uh, quite a following for a number of years. It's a little river band reminiscing all 70s music weekend here at 95.5 KZY. Friday night it was late, I was walking you home. We got down to the gate and I was dreaming of the night. 95.5 KZY, KKZY, Bemidji. Little River Band, number two song on this day 28 years ago, October 1st, 1978. Uh, back in the day, of course, uh, most music was uh, reproduced either on tape or uh, on uh, long play record. And if something started prematurely, you could lift the tone arm up or pull the tape cartridge out. With computers, you got to kind of nowadays just, if it starts, you just got to run with it, okay? And that's why <laughs> we got started with that. By the way, of course, that was a little river band reminiscing their uh, first top 10 hit. It would eventually go to number one, stay at the top of the charts for two weeks. And uh, some uh, additional trivia here, Reminiscing has been recognized by uh, music licensing companies as the most frequently played song in the history of American radio. I should say one of the most frequently played with more than four million plays to its credit. And the late John Lennon named Reminiscing as one of his favorite songs of all time. Want to uh, just remind you briefly that our uh, survey is compiled from a list of top 40 radio station surveys from October 1st, 1978. And uh, the top five albums around the country as far as sales on this date and uh, 1978, 28 years ago. Top five albums, Tomato from Yes on Atlantic Records. Some Girls by the Rolling Stones on Rolling Stones Records. Don't Look Back from Boston was the number three record on this date. Who Are You from The Who on MCA was the uh, number two album. And the number one best-selling album 28 years ago, Grease, the original movie soundtrack on RSO Records. And with that, we now come to the number one song, October 1st, 1978. It's from a Los Angeles-based band that effectively tapped into the disco craze 
and was awarded a platinum record for this single and went on to win the Grammy Award for Best New Artist of 1978. This song was arguably one of the biggest runaway hits of the disco era, spending an incredible five weeks in the number one position. It has been re-released and remixed numerous times over the years, but for this occasion... We uh, located a copy of the original and, in my personal opinion, the best mix that you heard 28 years ago. Janice Marie Johnson, Hazel Payne, Perry Kibble, and Donald Johnson remembered corporately as a taste of honey. And here they are with one of the biggest disco hits of the 70s and the number one song on October 1st, 1978 on Capitol Records. It's the original Boogie Oogie Oogie. Here at 95.5 KZY, number one 28 years ago.